As we welcome you back now to the Olympic Stadium, the Telstra Stadium here. 80,000 people waiting for East versus West. And what a classic matchup. There they are, the defending premiers against the minor premiers, the Panthers. Fantastic atmosphere. I don't think I've felt anything quite like this. Certainly not since we've been coming out here to Homebush. The Panthers, of course, hoping to pull off a Cinderella story all of their own. Wooden Spooners in 2001, third last in 2002, and they were second last after just two weeks of the 2003 Telstra Premiership. It'll be a magnificent achievement if they can pull it off. The Premiers, of course, the defending Premiers, they have the right to lead out the grand final teams. They will get a tremendous reception, but I am waiting for Penrith to come out because I think they're going to carry the weight of the bulk of this crowd that has assembled at Homebush tonight. Six of these Roosters were not here last year. Brad Finler was 19 when he won the grand final in 91. Let's walk out with Penrith. in 2000 and they are amazing pictures you want to get an idea of what it's like to be out in the middle of Telstra Stadium on grand final night well there it is Preston Campbell just soaking up the atmosphere what a comeback for him looking around the crowd settling the nerves Brad Miller he's been there and done it before it's still a huge occasion and one that has to be reckoned with final for the Roosters since the year 2000 and of course Penrith have not been here since 1991 that was the grand final that I was referring to with Brad Fittler at 19 he's now 12 years down the track at 31 as is Ryan Girdler who's in center screen at the moment Girdler looking for his first grand final victory as Fittler and his his troops line up together with Craig Gower at the other side of the podium. And Troy Cassadaly is going to sing the Australian National Anthem, dedicating it to the late Slim Dusty. Troy Cassadaly on Grand Final Night, 2000. Anthem dedicated to the great Slim Dusty. Michael Crocker. 
taking on some water. Craig Fitzgibbon looking for back-to-back -back Clive Churchill medals. Luke Rickardson, the most capped of all roosters. And coach Johnny Lang. Vicky Stewart, six finals matches in a row as a first-grade coach. Already under his belt. That's the sea looking down the ground. The Roosters are going to defend the southern end of the Olympic Stadium. Bill Harrigan is about to referee his 10th grand final. This is his seventh in succession. He jogs over towards the eastern touchline. So the defending premiers running from right to left. And I wonder what thoughts are going through. Finally, the mind of Brad Fidler. Raised out at the foot of the mountain. He kicks off for the Sydney Roosters to defend their title. Gower takes it off the feet. Pulato is tackled and just made the field of play. Such was the chase on the kickoff. With me, Mark is up. And maybe they're in. Oh, again, a damaging tackle. By the Roosters on Joe Nullivar. Here's Martin Lang now, meeting the full oh, wrath of the Roosters defence. Here on short side. Lang, 10 metres out, that's the third tackle. And Prittis is now met by three oh, more defenders oh, who force him back. Four tackles gone. As they get it to the boot. And that's a magnificent kick by Craig Gower, fielded by Minicello. trend hasn't it some great defense there but Penrith made the mistake of not catching the kickoff on the full it gave the chasing team time to get down and hit them with everything and now Craig wing into dummy half lines Jason Cutts he's hit well low that's probably Prince it normally is so here's Morley the Englishman with a chance to do what Malcolm really did back in 72 73 with back-to-back -back championships with Manly Crocker will play the ball, 30 metres out. Five tackles for Fittler. They use the hands, they're going to Hegarty. Now to Byrne, and Byrne tries to circle them, but he's tackled. Well, adventurous play there by the Roosters, and a penalty now goes to Penrith, throwing the ball away. A little crack guard down that short side on the fifth tackle. Todd Byrne had to come back inside. He made the silly error of throwing the ball away. Penalty given by Bill Harrigan, first of the match. So Gower for touch on the western side. None of that. Let him up now, one. Here we are. Just outside their own 40 metre line. And there's Go Lang on, again two. taking a battering. Yeah, right. They've got to get a little bit of variation in their attack. You go one out like this, the Roosters can aim a Three. number of troops at you. They need yeah. some decoys. Bodies in motion, just to take a little bit of heat off. Here's Clinton. Outside the 40 metre line. Hold here. Last time they played was at Penrith in round 20, and by half time the Roosters basically had the match tied up. Gower's kick is going to go in touching goal. So back to the 20 metre line for Penrith now. Under coach John Lang to dish out some of their own punishment. One. Back to Lee, keep coming, Penrith. Played there by Fitzgibbon, and here's Ned Katic. Two! Another of those Nathan. personalities involved in this grand final that have got allegiances spread across both sides. Here's Fitzgibbon, Three. Andrew Voss, sideline. Yeah, and the rain returned about one minute after the players ran on. It's enough to be a nuisance at the moment rather than a great hindrance to the players. Oh. Look at the toss. Bill Make Harrigan spoke again. about Hold. the play the ball and Don't the markers. That's what he's going to be strict on. In previous grand finals, he's given as few as five penalties, so don't expect Stay too many stoppages it. tonight. Hitless kick, fielded by Rooney. Back three for Penrith have returned something like 58 tries for the year. Rooney contributing 15 of them. And this is him with the ball again after Girdler had a touch. Girdler just looking down at his left ankle. He's OK. Now Scott Sattler. Four. Pull back for me now. Here we are, short side. Prittis. Mark 
Lucas locked in straight, they go early, five last. Luke, of course, was a member of that Brisbane side that beat the Roosters three years back. Gower kicking away from Minicello. And that's something else that really they have to do. That has to be part of the recipe. Try to kick away from Minatello. They give him a real belting in the tackle. Yeah, that was clever work from Craig Gower. He actually ran a few more metres when he realised he could do so. And then kicked the other way. He has the best percentage all season of kicking to open spaces. That will be Sorry, invaluable. Burn now. This is Michael Proctor. Straighten up. Four. Kangaroo team to be announced at... 11 on Monday morning, uh, tomorrow morning, so he would be one of many contenders out there tonight that have got a chance of green and gold. Just inside their own 40-metre line, and Fittler puts this kick in. It's bouncing well in advance of Lewis, who takes it on about the third bounce. And young Luke Lewis is taken by Morley and Rickardson, and then they just shove him back down the ground. I know it's only early in the match, but uh, the Penrith back three you mentioned... Uh, Wessa, oh, Lewis and Rooney are standing 50 metres behind the defensive line. There's a mile of room if Brad Fittler can spot it for a little chip kick, even early in the match. Joel Clinton. This line and hold. On the 40 oh, metre line, Kalis yeah. and Morley involved in the defence there with Caddick. And now Lang. Oh. Probably doing what most of the experts were saying they shouldn't be doing, just taking it up and... He throws the ball in. Pull it to us with it now. And he will play it on the eastern touchline. 40 metres away from the Roosters' try line. Prittis goes across for Gower. And Gower goes to the air. It's very, very high. Straight to Minicello. And there's a penalty. It's to the Roosters. I guess he's ruled that Rooney was in front of the kicker. And some of the crowd happy with the decision. Ricky Stewart. Doesn't give much away. He's fairly happy with the team start. Nice physical opening that we were expecting, and we will continue with Carlos taking it forward into Lang. 30 metre line. There's Morley makes another aggressive run. Run of about 10 metres. Now they're outside the 40 as they go back for Caddick. Three, let him up a few metres on his own side of the halfway. Craig Wing has yet to make a run out of dummy half. It's through the hands again to Fitzgibbon. Oh, make this point. Wing to the right for Fittler. And Fittler puts the kick down towards Rooney's wing again. And here's... One of the oh, there's an injury for Crocker. He went in, he misfired. And he's in all sorts of trouble in back play. He's got the nasty knock just under his right eye. Cheekbone is open. Three. Yeah. Anxious moments on the Roosters bench at uh, the Olympic Stadium. Oh. Lang is picked Short up and side. put into the ground again by Fitzgibbon and Morley. Campbell gets it away. Gower tries to step inside. Rickardson. Players on the halfway line. Campbell again now. They work something down the blind, but it goes to Girdler's boot and the, the kick goes straight to Minicello. And the man that makes more metres than anybody in the game is quickly back to the 40-metre line for Fitzgibbon to take it ahead even further. And that's why he cannot be catching kicks on the full Anthony Minicello. He is so dangerous. The Bulldogs fell into that trap last week. They don't have to learn from that as Morley looks for a gap in the middle of the ruck. None coming. Morley played it. Wing... Gabe at Rickardson runs it and Sattler is around the legs and Clinton is over the top. As the Roosters uh, approach the 30 metre line, Fittler away for Cross. And is that Crocker? Yes, it is. Put the blood away from that stream that was coming down from the cheekbone area. Fittler's kick goes down to Reese Wesser. 25 times a try scorer this year. Oh, great, into the ground. Yeah, great tackle, Brad Fittler. They stood around the Roosters, watched Reese Wesser run that ball back. It took the kicker to make the tackle. This is Lewis with the ball now. And then Rooney. This is something that I think they've got to do. Both the wingers have got to come in and do some dummy half running. Oh, Clinton. And again, it was Crocker. Well, what's he made of Michael Crocker? Well, the same stuff as Joel Clinton is because he was able to offload despite that collision. 
Parker showing the signs of battle as Campbell finds an inside man in Scott Sattler. Gow on to Wesser. Wesser to the 40 metre line. And the tackler again was Michael Crocker. Together with Jason Taylor. Now to Gow. Then to Girdler. Girdler off the left foot. Again it goes to Minicello, but along the ground. Gow makes the tackle. Hegarty comes away. Playing his 100th first grade game tonight. And the worried look on John Lang's face. Don't expect that to be any different until about the 79th minute. John Cartwright, a former Panther, assistant coach to Ricky Stewart on the sideline. Katik is with the ball. 39 metres away from the Roosters line. His wing kicks out a dummy half to Rooney. And Luke has had a lot of work. On the other side of the ground, Luke Lewis has had, by comparison, very little. And I suppose that's one of the reasons Luke Rooney and his uh, cohorts are well back, because Craig Wing does possess one of the best 40-20 kicks in the game from Dummy Hart. They're well aware of that. Good coaching by John Lang. He's dropping back a long way. Oh. Oh. Taylor's over the top of Fitzgibbon, and again they hammer Joe Martin Lang. Nullabell. Have a look at this. That's about the fifth or sixth time they've really nailed him. And that's why there's got to be a little bit more deception. You've got to try and run between players or you've got to get bodies in motion. Campbell, first receiver. Kicks. It is with Walker. Couple tries last weekend. Finch is about to come into the game in jumper number seven. Two. And it's just about the same period of time that he came in against the Bulldogs, maybe a minute earlier. Crocker is grasped. 23 out in his own line. Good play, the ball. No markers. And Craig Wing was very quick to pick that up. So he took an easy 10 metres. Fitler sees what he thinks is an opening. He's a couple of metres from the halfway line as it comes across into the hands of Finch. And Brett, of course, playing in his first grand final. New colours this year. Lewis is with the ball back on the 20. Kalis has made 10 tackles. And Ned Kanick is the first player to be interchanged. Marcus, lock in straight. Everyone back to me. Here's Sattler. And Gerdler loses it. I thought behind him. Bill Harrigan yeah. agrees with that. Walk down memory lane, isn't it, when you're calling names like this fellow carries? Scotty Sattler. His dad played in six grand finals. And there was a piece, of course, on him in that preview, which I hope you enjoyed. Here's Martin Lang again. Ray, we've actually got six sons out there of fathers who have played first grade grand finals. So some wonderful names as Campbell. Lang looks to me as though he's lost his, uh, his balance. He, he got up and then he collapsed to the ground. Now the trainer is with him as Hegarty makes a dart away from dummy half for the Premiers. And that was the hit on Lang. Minicello, it wasn't Minicello, but Morley came over the top with the left forearm. Here's Morley now, and Nullavau and Pulatua. They make the tackle on the 40-metre line. Dealing out a little bit of their own medicine, but the Roosters are hitting like jackhammers. They're pulverising anybody with the football. Wesser is tackled. 35 metres out from his own line. And Lewis is with the ball now for the Panthers. The Black Cats. Fatawira, almost to the halfway line. And now it is with Clinton. And there comes the ball, it might be stolen. It's stolen, all right, stolen by Campbell. Preston Campbell plays it, and here's Prittis going for a dummy half run, getting it 10 metres from the line. Tackle number five. Campbell to the left, puts the kick in. Minicello will cover it up. Well, they're looking dangerous. Preston Campbell, a loose ball just popped up on the ground. He picked it up. And Joel Clinton, nice little offload it was in the end. You can see the rain streaming down now, and he was away. Made good 20 metres, good defence to bring him down. And then Prittis, a great run. Plenty of a dummy half experience from Luke Prittis. On the charge, the Panthers. Dropout. Hasn't got a lot of quality about it. 
kicked up into his own hands by Rhys Wesser. What? Here we are. Just Lord outside the 30 metre line. 14 minutes gone in the first half. Details there on your chance to win $5,000. Clinton will show that again, of course, through the match. Rickardson making the tackle. A real good chance for the Panthers here. Prittis has tackled. Five metres out from the line. The pundits said they had to get away to a good start. I wonder, is it about to unfold? Sattler has tackled. Two metres out from the southern try line. Play back to Fadawira. Now for Campbell. He kicks, he's gone looking for the lanky Rooney. He's got the ball! But the Roosters' defence, how they did that, I'm not quite sure. It was magnificent defence. And that's kicking to your strengths. They're very good under the high ball, both the Penrith wingers. Preston Campbell knows that. But praise to the defence there. Rooney was grabbed straight away. Chaos now loops playing service but goes back on he's played back on trying to get Chris Flannery into the action as the Roosters worked out 15 off their own line through Fitzgibbon Fitzgibbon with a good run 28 metres out from his own line Greg Wing now is met by Tony Pulatua and taken to ground Fitzgibbon I get a feeling that they might have jumped their first hurdle Paul Vorton the Panthers the, the heat that initial heat the initial battering. I'm oh, sure they have. Yes, they, they actually look pretty good with the football in their hands the last four or five minutes. Repeat sets of six. Now they just got the ball back in good field position. The Roosters really struggled then to get out of their own territory. Shatler plays it now, just outside the 40. No changes for the Panthers. Two changes for the Roosters. We know that, Cro uh, that Crocker has got a problem. We know that Kalis has got a problem. And Lang is also out there. He's still out there, but playing wounded. Now Wesser, 35 out. Misunderstanding with Puller Tua. Fired the ball back to Martin Lang. He runs into Michael Crocker. And then the defence of the Roosters dominates the Penrith front row forward. Now Prittis getting it away to Gower. And Gower puts a short kick in. Walker's come up with the ball. Taken by the kicker. Eventually tidied up by Prittis on the... Eastern touchline in front of a packed house at the Olympic Stadium. He's in a purple patch, Chris Walker. It was a great pick up there. If it had bounced any other way, it was a problem for them. Luckily for Penrith, Craig Gower was there to take him, otherwise, he was away as Rickardson is taken by Campbell and Nullabow on the halfway line. The grand final on the Nine Network coming to you commercial free. As it goes from Hegarty and goes behind Flannery, and he can't quite get a hold on it. Now he does, and Girdler is on top of him. Played back to Ryan Cross, the leading try scorer for the Roosters. Short side. Pull back here. Preston. Wing then, finding Finch, and Finch puts it on the right boot, and Rooney goes down low and brings it back off the 30-metre line. Andrew Voss, sideline. Yeah, this has been great from the Panthers, absorbing punishment, and John Lang knows the punishment that his son Martin can copy. Left him out there. To the night. There's another shot on this man, Ben Ross, who has just come on for Joel Clinton. A show of faith, Mark Lang, he can last it out. I've got to say, I'm looking at some, some of the best athletes in our game in this Rooster side. They're feeling the pinch, the likes of Fitzgibbon and Rickardson. Jimmy Lang barking instructions into a well-worn microphone. The ball goes to ground. It was knocked down, knocked back by the Roosters. No, it's a knock on. Is it a knock-on, according think, to the touch man? I reckon he's got a call, yeah. He's deliberately played at this and he's knocked it forward. And I'm pretty sure they got it right, too. It's an attempted pass, then knocked down. Now, did that go backwards or forwards? Uh, it's a knock-on for mine off Rickardson. I'm happy with the call. Well, I disagree. I thought Actually, the... yeah, I, I'm with you now, Ravi. Yeah, at I first, I thought it went forward, and then I thought initially. Then it just went backwards and maybe bounced forward. No, I thought Harrigan got it right. The touch man, Let's I go, think, go. got it wrong. He'd been relatively happy. I know the face doesn't paint that picture, but I've got no oh. doubts that they've overcome the first obstacle. They're at the 18th minute, and they're level pegging with the defending premiers, the underdogs, the boys from the, the base of the mountain. Sattler, 35 away from the Roosters' line. We'll play it back for Girdler, and this is Ross. Luke Prittis has had a tremendous start, 55 metres gained on five hit-ups. And Gildo is on the end of the perler. 
Wonderful hit by Morley, and the ball has been lost in getting up. A very poor attempt to play the ball. The referee's telling Craig Gary tried to play the ball too early. And listen, listen, Craig, I called dominant, and you got up, tried to play the ball too quick, and you put it behind his foot. He's got to be allowed to get away. No fall Craig. through his. It was no fault. You can control the play of the ball. He was getting up. I called dominant. You control the play of the ball. You put the ball where you can play it. Let's go. I hate referees calling dominant. Try to do it too quick, mate. We've always had dominant tackles in our game, and it should be just be refereed with the way that the tackle is. He doesn't have to tell people or players that that's what it is. You know, in the end, after 20 minutes of this match, I think it's the Roosters who have done well to have held Penrith at bay because uh, the Roosters haven't had yet the ball in Penrith's 20 metre zone. The Penrith have had six or seven tackles in their danger zone. They've held them out. So the Roosters actually, they're going all right. Three, let him up. Crocker. Let go. Already enduring the pain of grand oh, final football. Three. The pain of rugby league, I suppose, but it, it goes up a couple of uh, a couple of rungs on the ladder in grand finals. Charged down Let's on go. the pinch kick. Fielded by Fittler. He goes away from Campbell. The pass is not good to Minicello. Jack and Campbell's restarted, played at. What they've got to do at the end of this set of six is actually try and find the grass with a kick. The last four kicks they put in the Roosters have found Penrith players on the full. Played there by Flannery and his wing starting to look for open space out from dummy half. He's tackled right on the 40 metre line, northern end of the ground. That's the end defended by the Panthers. Here's Finch putting in a kick. He was taken out. Was he taken out late? The work is being done back there by Lewis. He's in the end goal. Can he get it back? No, he's tackled in goal. And a great tackle by Luke Rickardson. Great kick by Finch. Early in the tackle count. Ricky Stewart barking instructions. Luke Rickardson to the fore there. Magnificent tackle. Really good vision here by Brett Finch. Well, that was late too. Well, he only copped a bit of a, a knock. So Luke, and look at the chase. Chase is excellent, but he was going to get away until Rickardson nabbed him. I think they might have been lucky to get out with a line dropout. Stay behind. Rather than the penalty, I just fancy that Harrigan might have been in two lines. Or oh, this drop kick out from the goalpost by Sadler is ordinary. It's with Hegarty. One now, short side here. Mark is blocked in. Now they get the chance that Paul Horton was talking Two. about only a minute ago. They are inside the 20 metre line. Fittler turns it back for Finch. It comes across to Hegarty. Back on the western side, he tries to centralise play. Taken by Nullivau and Lang as Wing gives it away to Finch and it goes on. And then it's with Fittler. And oh, Fittler's pass again was bad. And that is probably Walker underneath that tackle. In fact, it is. And he plays it back for Ryan Cross and then to Brad Fittler again before Luke Rickardson and Brett Finch and then Campbell goes for an intercept but it's been uh, knocked backwards or should I say knocked forward it's the advantage applying to Michael Crocker and Sydney Roosters will come at them again and for the third successive set in a row can the Panthers hold on here Finch throws it down and Campbell piggybacks into the earth five metres from the line Flannery looking at the corner post looking at Jay Nullivar held up by Luke Lewis in combination with Nullivar Back by Flannery to wing, then to Finch, and now to Minicello. Coming up, can they smell a try? Minicello always seems to become prominent when that's the situation. Here's Rickardson, now to way to Byrne, and Byrne crawling along the ground, eventually steadied by Nullivar. Hegarty looks back and fights Crocker! Crocker's tackled on five, five metres from the line, Hegarty with a long ball to his captain. A neat little kick by Fittler. They will pray it goes dead and it does. John Lang, John Lang breathes a sigh of relief. The boys look on from the Roosters. A lot of pressure out there. Very intense grand final. Martin Lang again. Luke Swain is now on. That's his first touch, Joe Nullivau, the man replaced. Uh, it's a real battle of attrition out there. A lot of interchanges early in this game is an indication of how physical it has been. But Joe Nullivau, 20 tackles in the opening, 23 minutes. Great and effort. Now Lang has come to the sideline. And straight down on his haunches as Waterhouse Whoa, takes it over the halfway. Great job. So they're working on the interchange bench now as Gower turns it back for a call from Tony Puller to it. Gone from 
for the Panthers. 20 metres out, centre of the ground. Prittis intercepted. Intercepted by Ryan Cross. Beautiful tackle by Pulitua. Well, what was he doing back there? Having a little rest, I think. But luckily for Penrith that he was. Otherwise, Cross was away. Great tackle by Pulitua. The errors to one with now. Penrith on the wrong side of that statistic. Rickardson at the 40-metre line now. Right in the centre of the ground, they've used three now, the Panthers. And that's the way Penrith play. They'll take your chances. Beautiful lead-up in that set of six. About eight sets of hands involved. Scrappy play the ball will be called to a halt. It's a scrum down. And they will have the loose head and feed. High fives for Trent Waterhouse. Trying to play the ball too quick. This was the intercept just earlier on. And then cover defence from Tony Pulitua. John Lang really fuming down there. Well, he was complaining that one of his staff or one of his players got retrieved the football and he was saying that's not their job. Marcus Warner, Marcus the ball boys. And the man of the match, your chance to win $5,000 by picking tonight's grand final hero. To enter, you either call 1902 555081 and follow the prompts with the jumper number of your pick or text the player's name to 188-9981. Entries close at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight. So you better be quick. Three, here we are, pull back on this line. Now the Panthers go on a big roll with Ross. 15 away from the line. And these forwards, the Roosters forwards, the spring has gone from a couple of them at the moment. This will be a line dropout. The Panthers will get six more. And the Penrith forwards, forwards, they roll on. Martin Lane comes off. Ben Ross made a great run, a strong charging run for 10, 15 metres. Good kick on the end of it. Ten. Well played, Penrith. Ten. Change made by the Sydney Roosters. Change number three. The new man well, Chad Robinson is going on as we watch this <laughs> completion there by, by Penrith. And again, oh, Swain has tried to take it on the boots. It came off the boots and went forward. Harrigan said play on. They're 12 metres out from the line. Second tackle in play. Campbell for Wessler. Wessler's met there by Cross and Finch. Way over on the right-hand side. Now Ross. Oh, Morley. Rattles him up. 12 metres out from the line. Prittis. To the right and working an angle with Sattler who does the same with Campbell. And Campbell, Four. all 70 kilograms of him, is forced to the ground. Play back for Prittis now to go left for Gower. Gower on for Pulitua, running at the number seven, and Finch. And he's tackled on five, seven metres out from the line. Girdler goes for a blind shot, a blindside play, but it's got too much weight. Like he was very good execution, just not what Ryan Girdler wanted. He knows that was a chance. All line dropout so far. This evening will be pretty dusty, tough conditions. And Luke Swain was able to regather that one as Ryan Girdler on the last. Almost impossible for the Roosters to stop that if the kick was inch perfect. So Fittler is hit by the Panthers' defence. He was able to shovel the ball away. That is Chad Robinson with it. And he's played it back to wing and then to Finch and now to Flannery. And they are just inside their 40 metre line. Wing for Morley and look at the pace of the man. He is so quick. Wonderful athlete and he really hits with a lot of venom. Fitless kick has gone straight to Lewis. Lewis then pulled down 20 metres away from his own line. Wessel will take the run, he has to. There's nobody else at home. Just inside 30. Now, it's a run by Fatawira, out to the 40 metre line. And four changes for Penrith, three for the Sydney Roosters. You're watching the grand final of the Telstra Premiership. Live on the Nine Network and going live into the UK on Sky Sports as well. Now the youngest player in the grand final is on out there, Rodney in 16. As Gower puts in a kick. Stay and Minicello ambles Stay across there. to it. Stay there. Comes off his own line. Rain tumbling down. 10 metres out from his own line, it'll be played by Minicello. Here is Walker. Let him up now quickly. It's Jason Chaos. 
prepares to come back into the game. Robinson. Conditions changing with every minute, Andrew Voss. Yeah, you said rain tumbling down. It is now tumbling down heavier, has been the case for the last five minutes. Suddenly you start concentrating on two things in particular, field position and patience. Errors are going to come in this sort of brutal defence. The opposition team will make errors. Now Reese Wesser fielding it back on his own ten. Greeted by three of them. Moving, seven, one. 20 metre line achieved by Wesser. Lewis comes away. Marcus and Gower is Martin forced to go into dummy through. half. Girdler's coming in no, to take a run for him. And there is Girdler now. Trying to go through the middle. He runs into Kalis. Jason, of course, in this grand final, his second grand final, I think most people would have thought that Nathan probably would have been in more grand finals. a fantastic run. Luke Prittis, fantastic. Straight out of dummy half. He realised that the marker was offside. He ran straight at it. He comes to the defender. The defender will believe now that he should have made the tackle. He was called offside, or knew he was offside. And he allowed him to go straight up the middle of the ruck. And Prittis then committed the fullback Anthony Minicello and Luke Rooney. 16 tries for the season now, and will there be any more important than that? Who's the man that Prittis picks out? It's Jason Kalis. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Harrigan called him offside, Jason Kalis. Honestly, he'd have been better off giving away a penalty because in the end it's cost them four points. Great run by Prittis, and look, he had to actually slow up, wait for Rooney to catch, and a good finishing winger, Luke Rooney. But it's been coming, hasn't it? You know, to be honest, Penrith have probably had the better of possession and they've, they've played better. Well, they met fire with fire. Early on, in those physical confrontations, there's a reverse angle shot. And it clearly shows Luke Prittis realising what was needed and coming up with the goods. And Rooney, he knows, all the wingers know, the fullback know that when Luke Prittis gets to dummy half, he will take an opportunity and go. They've got to be there. They've got to be aware. And John Lang, he said he wouldn't give much away with his first points on the board and he still couldn't crack a smile. His first grand final after 30 year, 13 years in the top grade. Girdler to convert. From 25 out, it doesn't look bad. The flags are up. The try of Rooney's has been converted. It is 6-0 in favour of the Mountain Men. And sideline tonight, Ray, has been like having front row seats in a heavyweight fight. What about some of the impact of the hits? This was the first set of six. They had to absorb punishment. Likewise, the Roosters. Michael Crocker flat on his back twice. And Martin Lang like he's got a big target around his chest. It has been brutal. Penrith have absorbed that pressure. They've come back with the first try of the match. And on the bench right now, Joe Nullivau getting treatment for that hip injury he carried into the game. So, Brad Fittler... Takes us into the next segment of this game. This enthralling battle. With seven minutes to remain before they get a break. It has been frenetic. It has been pulsating. It has been punishing. And it's been tiring. Luke Ricketson already 20 tackles up. It's quite remarkable how Penrith have reversed the starts to their game in the last couple of weeks. They were so poor against Brisbane, against Parramatta coming into the finals they've got the first try against the Warriors and now they've done it again tonight through their wingers Lewis last week, Rooney tonight Minicello brings the ball back in good field position and two of the little men, Campbell and Prentice make the tackle on Minicello Fittler giving it off for Robinson and he's tackled by Rodney played back for Brett Fincher, dummy half to go to Ryan Cross and Ryan is tackled just inside the 40 metre line well, the crown is just just tilted a little bit on the head of the Sydney Roosters at the moment. The one that they proudly took back to Bondi. Here's a beautiful ball by Fittler, getting it away, and a crawling Flannery is tackled. Last Two tackle. metres from the line. Trouble for Walker. Fittler kicks across. Rooney's under pressure. No, he's not. 
He takes it on the fall. The other winger, Walker, was injured on the other side of the ground. Well, that's right. That kick was put in for Chris Walker. Unfortunately, he was cast. He was down on the on the ground, sucking them in. They need a bit more position up in this area, don't they? Lovely ball from Brad Fittler. And he looks the man most likely when the Roosters do have the football. Chris Walker got hammered there in support. I don't think there's been a better player on the field, though, in the first half than Adrian Morley. He's just been outstanding, the Englishman. 18 tackles, 7 hit-ups, and all of them at 1,000 miles an hour. Swain. And here's Ben. Oh, there's Morley again with an absolute bone rattler on Ben Ross that time. Come on, pull back, pull back, pull back. Well, we've seen some great Englishmen come down here and play club football. Malcolm really was probably oh, the best of them, but this side. fellow more particularly in recent times has been so good gower is hurt Hold on. the penrith captain is injured well, he's one of those players that does not stay down john wang animated on the sideline want to know what the matter is and let's say it's nothing serious for this inspirational skipper got one wrap around the eye has he poking the eye No, it doesn't look like it. Nothing mm. up around the head area, face area. The collective heartbeats of Panther supporters and no doubt the Gower family. Well, he must have got a poke. Have stopped. Somehow in that tackle that Brent Fitch had him around the legs because he's... Yeah. Uh, already, like John Lang is barking instructions, Preston Campbell to half, I think he said. It's an animated Penrith coach. In fact, the coaches, we've had many pictures of them. Their faces wrinkled and furrowed with, with the worries and the nerves of being a rugby league first grade coach. Campbell, will he go to half? Will Gower stay? Gower will play the ball. Now it's with Waterhouse. I think he'd have to lose the eye, Craig Gow, before he came Five off. Hold, hold, hold Just watching him through the glasses, and he's trying to get some sight back in that that eye wound as Campbell kicks. And the cello coming away from that corner post on the southeastern side. Great defence by Penrith's Rodney. Well, it's been the big difference in the kicking games, hasn't it? As I mentioned before, the Roosters keep finding Penrith players. But Preston Campbell, Craig Gow, they find the deck every time and gives the defence a little bit more time to get up there and harass. Hegarty, now Finch, slipping over on the 10 metre line. Rodney taking the credit for a tackle. As Kalis now tries to crack them through the middle. He beat Ross, but he couldn't beat Prittis. I know you've put Morley down as the man of the match so far by Jove. I think... Uh, I think Luke Prittis might be up there as equal favourite with him at the moment, Paul. Here's Lewis. Just a couple of worrying little One signs there about Joe Nullivar. They're Pull still back. working feverishly on him on the sideline. He's had that hip problem for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, what included by an eye injury. Key players as we come into the last couple of minutes before half time. Swain now tries to burrow through a gap and he loses the ball. Morley will play it, 40 metres away from the Panthers' line. Can the Roosters, can the defending Premiers find some points before half-time? Finch on the receiving end of the dummy half-pass. Now Sorry. Fitzgibbon. Wing to the 20-metre line, and he lets go himself this time. Oh, make it to me, 15 away. Back to Finch, a dummy half, and then to Rickardson. And three of the Panthers are there to combine to pull him oh, down. Oh, Fifth and last has been called by Harrigan as they hammer away at the northern try line. Finch that came off the boot of Luke Swain who didn't play at the ball. It's been dived on in an onside position by Waterhouse and played back immediately to Lewis. And he runs into Morley and Morley puts him away. 
I'm tipping that Ricky Stewart can't wait to get his charges to talk to them, mainly about their kicking game. Once again, the last two times they've been down to the 20 metres and we saw a soft kick by Brad Fittler taken on the full. That one was ordinary from Brett Finch. They need to just uh, take their time about their kicks. Ross then played it on the 30 metre line. He got a, a dubious pass from Waterhouse who offloads. That's good luck. And Ryan will play the ball as take another shot of Ricky Stewart watching on as Campbell puts in a big kick. Minicello, he really puts emergency into his run across to take it on the full. Yeah, he's done really well, Preston Campbell. He's taken over the responsibility now. He knows that Gower is having a, a few problems. The chase is good. The Roosters come wide straight away. Higgity, tackle 35 out inside the final two minutes. Fittler looks across at Chris Walker as if to say, are you ready? And Walker says, I'm here. To be tackled and put down by Swain. Now from Byrne, it's gone to Fittler, then to Fitzgibbon. And they're on the halfway line. They're trailing 6-0. The Panthers scoring through Rooney, converted by Girdler. Now Higgity to the 40-metre line. A minute and a half to the break. Holden half-time coming up at the break. Phil Gould will join the commentary team. As Finch puts a kick in, Wesser takes the ball. Back at his own 10-metre line. Runs towards Luke Rooney. Beats Ryan Cross. Gets out to the 20. Now good. And he's got them. Oh, so not being direct. Yeah, too smart, Ryan Good. He's been around a long time. And he spotted there was a, an offside chance there. There's the crossbar cam. Comes into play for the first time tonight. Another indication, as Paul pointed out, the kick, no pressure on Penrith whatsoever. And can the Panthers get within field goal range in the last tackle? Maybe someone will step up to make it 7-0 at halftime. Uh, difficult conditions, and normally McGow's the only one who's kicked field goals this year. Waterhouse. A strong run to just outside the 30. Prittis finds Sattler. Sattler finds Rodney. Oh, he tries to pass. And the scrum will go down if time permits. There's only 20 seconds on the clock. Well, it's been a great first half. He couldn't hang on to this one. I think they were setting up for it. Preston Campbell and Craig Gow can both kick field goals. Disappointment at the end, but a great first half. Penrith, a good, uh, a good start. The Roosters just need more ball. Minicello. Takes the ball right on the halftime siren. So the Panthers are away to the start they dreamed of. They had to be first to score in the minds of most people. They wanted to be the first to score in their own hearts and minds. As Ricky Stewart heads back to wait for his team, we take a break. It is 6 0 in the grand final. Penrith over the Sydney Roosters. Holden half time with Phil Gould and Andrew Voss is coming up on the other side of this. 6 0. The Penrith Panthers over the Sydney Roosters in the 2003 Telstra Premiership Grand Final. In front of this capacity crowd at Telstra Stadium, the Olympic Stadium. And a magnificent game is unfolding here. Panthers getting away to the start that they really had to. They weathered a battering in the first 18 or 19 minutes and then they overcame that and then they struck back, scored the first try as Ricky Stewart gathers his troops around him. And uh, these are coming to you from the dressing room of the Roosters live. They'll be cert certainly on their way out in just a moment. The Panthers room, John Lang is talking to them individually at the moment. Interesting to note, Peter, that at halftime, the Panthers have led 14 times and won on 13 occasions. That's impressive. They've been good front runners, haven't they? Conversely, the tricolours there, they've been behind 10 times at halftime for six wins. And I guess a lot of teams throughout the competition, that's not a bad conversion rate. Not as good as the Penrith team. Well, Paul Morton. Have you changed your opinion? Look, no, I still think the Roosters can win it. They just need a lot more possession than they had in the first half. And honestly, I do hope Ricky Stewart, I'm sure he did, he's a great coach, addressed their kicking game. Better kicking game. And uh, I think they can... 
if they can control the football down in their 20 metre zone, the Penrith 20 metre zone, they can still get out of it. But geez, Penrith are going great. Panthers on their way back. Get a big reception again. saying to you has had a, an impeccable game. There might have been one dubious call, but I think it was the touch judge. With Erd, but other, as for the number one referee in his 10th grand final, it's been very close to impeccable. Waterhouse, one of the young Penrith players that has come through in this new era for Panthers. Cello has dug them out of a few holes in the last couple of years. He's had a great season, Minicello. Will it be him that might pull them back? Girdler's ready to kick off. Bill Harrigan's ready. There's the whistle. The second half is underway. Penrith taking a six-point lead into the second half. And here is Jason Kalis met by a much smaller Luke Swain, Luke Prittis and Trent Waterhouse. Three of them involved and they really hit hard and Swain is hurt. Swain is unconscious. Well, he's not well. Trying to get to his feet. In fact, Penrith have started this second half with all four bench players in action. And he is in all sorts of trouble, young Luke Swain. Yes. Unfortunately, the referee's seen that and called time off. He's not good. Well, he was the first man in on the tackle on Jason Kalis and his head went down under Kalis's body and then... He lay face down there for a couple of seconds as he copped the boot as the player tried to disentangle. But like most little redheads, he'll probably get up. And he did. He'll soldier on. So Kalis to play the ball. With all due respect, the yes, the Rooster should target him straight away, and that's what they did. Rickardson went straight through the tackle of the 17. Here's the fit of them with the, the clearing kick that skims across the top of the ground, which is now quite wet. The rain continuing to fall. Wesser tackle on the first tackle. Andrew Voss is back. And I can from tell you, shed. Ray, I can tell you from the Panthers dressing room, if they do go on to win this game, I think there'll be a number of companies, big businesses chasing Joel Clinton as a motivational speaker. I'm told he had a few choice words to say to his Panthers teammates at halftime, as he did earlier this year in a Roosters game. And there he is getting ready for a re-entry soon to this match from John Lang. Played again, Sam, was pretty much his instructions. Do exactly what we did in that first 40 minutes from the Roosters, the main message out of uh, Ricky Stewart's address to his players, patience and grinding it out. Certainly no panic. And it would seem there's a chance out on Gower's kick. And now it's handball down to Higgity. Prittis and Ross have to make the tackle, but it's good field position now for the Roosters. Down 6 nothing. early stage of second half. Morley running off Fiddler. Centre of the ground. Craig Wing using Luke Rickardson, who takes it up to the 30-metre line. Swain involved in that tackle with Waterhouse. Now Wing. It on to Flannery and Flannery dummies to Fiddler. Oh, Tried to split yeah, through, but he's tackled and played back to wing again. And now Fiddler gives it on to Kalis and Kalis oh, tries oh, to spin through and back away from the defence. Lost it. Uh, lost he's lost it. it. Lost it. It was all part of the tackle. All part of the tackle. You can hear Bill Harrigan say. A disappointment Three there. Fifth mate, tackle. Ball. They're in great position. Clung on well, Scott Sattler. Got to say that Scott's left Second elbow forced the ball out. Oh, just building up nicely there, weren't they? The Roosters, bit of possession down in that danger zone. Chris Flannery uh, running with the ball in two hands, creating some havoc. 
John Lang would love his team to get through maintaining this lead for 10 to 15 minutes so he can get the big guns back out there. They would just about go the distance, Nullabau, Puller 2 and Lang, if they could get back out there and still be in front. It would put them in a wonderful position. And Clinton, of course. 25 out from their own line. They're running to the northern end. The Panthers. The boys from the west up against the boys from Bondi Junction. The defending premiers against the minor premiers as Prittis leaves another mark on the game with a 12-metre run. They did well to hold on to that one. Campbell. Campbell kicks and it goes down. Bouncing up for Chris Walker. He runs across and shapes the pass to Minicello, but he's pulled down by Gower, who plays it back, and here's Minicello beating Campbell, and Ben Ross is the man tackle, or beg your pardon, Ben Ross is the tackler. On the 30-metre line, here's Fitzgibbon, and Rodney hits hard. Finch is able to pass the ball on the cross. And Ryan Cross will play the ball near the halfway line. On the Western touchline, Finch turning the ball in for Morley. And Morley will play it under the tackle of Rodney and Prudis and Sattler. And they go for a blindside play with Craig Wing. He beat Girdler's shoulder charge. He got the ball away to Walker. Walker starts to run across the ground on the 40-metre line. That went forward off Minichello. Advantage Penrith. Campbell will play the ball. That ball from Chris Walker actually made, I think, for uh, Chris Flannery, who was outside of Minichello. It was, looked, it was a good pass, but... Michelle just got in the way of it. Played by Waterhouse and Gower tries to start something down the, the left side, which is the short side on this occasion. Prittis turns it back into the middle for Ben Ross, who's been very strong since he came on. He's made some uh, punishing runs. First player off the ruck, and here's Sattler showing the ball and eventually finding Fatawira, then backing him up and making a run down the right side. Puts in a kick, it goes down to Minicello, he takes it on the feet and Wesser is there to greet him. Minicello playing at eight metres out from his line, Craig Wing is able to beat Fatawira, he beats Luke Lewis, he gets out and is tackled by Swain on the 20 metre line. Roosters into the ground, they are trailing 6-0, Fitzgibbon. Fiddler using Kalis now. Fitzgibbon won the Churchill medal last year. A chance to win it for the second time. The only other player to do that was Bradley Clyde, but never has it been won back-to-back. -back. As Finch puts in a kick, straight to Wesser. And he is tackled right on the 30-metre line. The winger, Lewis, is going to show it to Girdler before running across the ground. And Cross picks him off, and so does Finch. He made an easy target of himself there, Luke Lewis. The other Luke on the other wing, Rooney, the try scorer. He will play it back to Rodney, who's on in that green headgear to resume his work that he started late in the first oh. half. Playing near the halfway, a little dummy half for Magoa. Good yards. Now they're 38 out on five as they go from Girdler to Campbell, who knocks on. So instead of occupying very good field position, it now is the reverse in favour of the Roosters with Flannery. Now Wing and across to Fiddler who chooses to go back to Minicello. He got through Campbell, he was taken by Swain and by Sattler. And players right on the halfway line on the eastern side of the ground. Hegarty back to Fitzgibbon and they work on finding a hole up through the middle. 42 or 43 metres away from the line now, the Roosters. They're desperate for points as Finch tries to break them. Oh. He's tackled just outside 30. And then a hurdling Craig Wing, finding Brad Fittler, who in turn finds Rickardson, who gives it back to Wing. Oh, and Wing will play the ball on five and last. Oh, come on, come on. 18 metres out from the line, they go for the short side. Cross, Walker, Walker, speculator. Ball goes to ground, picked up by Wesser, and Wesser's got the ball for Penrith. He loses it in the tackle. It's all over the place. Bill Harrigan said play on. Restarts oh, the tackle oh, count. Shrimp. Fiddler plays the ball. Finch passes now. It's to Kalis. Ten metres out. Three metres out. Almost over the line. Play the ball. Play the ball. Step back, play Kalis, absolutely centimetres away from the line. Now it's gone out to Finch. 
and they're in trouble, the Panthers. Flannery uses Hegarty. Hegarty's in to score. Hegarty scores first points for the defending Premiers. And it came from a mistake from the Panthers, who'd done well to hold out for six. Ball was forced out of Reese Wess's hands. Here's Chris Walker throwing it back in. Cleaned up by Wessa, but unfortunately for Reese and his side, the impact of the tackle from Craig Green forced the ball loose. Rickardson did well to bat it back. Fitler showed urgency. And then as we freeze it there, you can see they never got enough defenders across. Three against about five as play continues. And the Bundy Telestrator, it was just a matter of using the ball, shaping the inside. All the defence going across. Campbell, wrong-footed. And Shannon Hegarty gets the first for the Roosters, as he, did, as he did last year against the Warriors. It was a great strip by Craig Wing on Reese Wesser. And they always had the number. It was a matter of, do they go to the outside or come back on an angle? They came back on the angle. And the Penrith defence, in trying to get there in time, overran Hegarty. And the space was there. So, look, they've had plenty of possession. Their kicking game's improved. Let's go to the... Jubilation on the there's the crossbar cam picking up Jason Kalis going within centimeters of scoring the try originally. Hegarty scores his 50th uh, 50th try celebrating his 100th first grade game today, and now Fitzgibbon to convert from the same place that Gertler converted earlier. Hits the uprights, go through. It's a converted try. It is six all. The Panthers and the Roosters. And yeah. This is just incredible goal off the upright. It's amazing how this game is following the course of last year's grand final, except the roles are reversed for the Roosters. This time last year, it was about this point of the game when Stacey Jones scored that blinding try to put the Warriors in front. Now we've got a six-all scoreline. It only opened up in the last quarter last year. Will it do the same tonight? Bossy, while we've got you, I can see Joel Clinton standing up. Joe Nullabau didn't play a lot of game time in the first half. Does he look as though he will come back into the game? Look, he has told the trainers he'll be right. It's all about keeping him loose. He can't afford basically to sit still at all for five minutes or the injury he took into the match will stiffen up and make it very hard to be mobile when he does get back onto the field. Here's Wigner. An incisive run. And tackled by a valiant young Swain. The Roosters now over on the eastern side of the ground. Flannery, seven hit-ups, 82 metres game. Six all is the score. The Roosters have not lost by more than ten points all year. And that was a kick ahead by Fittler that is marked by Wesser. This is when he's dangerous. Comes up on the full, takes the ball, and broken defence. 30 metres out for Reese Wesser. And Penrith have got to get Luke Swain off. In fact, he's coming to the sideline now. He is out on his feet. Rodney now. Just beyond the 40 metre line. And they cup it up their six point lead for quite some time. But now the Roosters are back with them. And we are dead level. Malavau is on and hit hard. A reminder from the Roosters that Joe, you might be carrying an injury, but it won't get any easier for you. Campbell puts the kick down. Minicello, so rare. Fairly simple take if there is anything simple in a game of such high pressure and in these conditions. But by that man's standards, we normally gobble them up. What a chance here for Penrith. One they certainly wouldn't have expected when the boot connected with ball. Golden opportunity now. Meets the men from the mountains. They win the scrum. Campbell runs straight at Minicello. He's played every minute of every game this year, Preston Campbell. Watch the big second row as Nullabau and pull it to it. They can get the ball to them. They are so dangerous. Sattler. Girdler is blindside. The second rowers are out to the right. And here's one of them coming in through the middle. It's pull it up. Hoping to find a hole that rarely presents itself down on goal line defence. Here is Gower. He puts a kick in. Campbell's after it. So is Todd Byrne. Todd Byrne's knocked on. Todd Byrne is knocked on. More pressure coming. Well, grand finals are all about 
pressure. And the pressure's starting to build on the Roosters now. Minicello had dropped. Byrne got to this one. Then lost it. Yeah, he had a look. Saw the black jerseys coming. Preston Campbell during his teammates up. Mixed reactions there. Penrith supporters amongst the Roosters supporters. Nullabar out in the back line. Gal away to Nullabar. Running it at Minicello. Rickardson quick across in defence. Prittis goes back to the right, a juggle by Gower. And Fitzgibbon is there with Flannery to put him away. Penrith captain plays the ball, Prittis runs it. Trenton is tackled! Two metres from the line. Pays it back for again, Luke Prittis, to go away to Gower. And then the Campbell. Campbell steps off his left foot, gives it to Reese Wesser. And Wesser is tackled. The line is eight metres away. Prittis comes away again to his 5'8", and then to the captain, Gower. Back to Sattler, back to Campbell. Campbell is 15 metres away from the line. Five tackles gone. Brilliant defence by the Sydney Roosters. And now it's from Prittis away to Girdler. It's come off the feet of the Roosters. Fittler's gone after it. Then he scoops the ball away to Byrne. Byrne puts on a fend. Then he puts on a sprint. Sattler is chasing. Sattler is made. greatest tackles you will ever see in any game. Unbelievable. What the pick-up by Fittler. A flying winger. And only one man, one man standing between the try line, a try to the Roosters, and it's Scott Sattler. And Gets he's... away from Lewis and watch the lock forward. He timed it perfectly. Todd Byrne on the fly. Had to get under the fan. Did that. That's just unbelievable. Never panicked at all. His father, John, is here. Wouldn't be a prouder man. His last game for the Panthers before he joins the West Tigers next year. And he may have gone a long way in helping his side to their second title. You know, every... Oh, oh, lost on ball. By, lost lost ball. by Fatawira. Here's danger for the Panthers. Just on what Scott Sattler just did. Here it is here. But every player dreams about making a tackle like Scott Sattler just did. Fatawira there. Hegarty. Stay As the Roosters come away with the scrum victory, and Ryan Cross will play the ball. 20 metres away from the Panthers' line, 6 all is the score, as Morley puts another couple of bruises on them. Wing for Fittler, and he cuts out Rickardson, he picks up Finch, and Fitzgibbon runs a decoy, Flannery gives it back, Minicelli is with the ball. He will play at 12 metres out from the line. Hegarty, the try scorer, comes across, showing the ball. Then it's Rickardson. Oh, he is not Henry. able to make a break up the middle, tackled by Clinton in the main. Now a dummy by wing and picks up Fiddler. Fiddler goes back to the, the short side. It's with Flannery. Flannery to play the ball. Still 10 metres away, fifth tackle. As it comes to the captain, he puts in a kick, and it probably will reach the dead ball line. Yes, it does. Now, that was so important for the Panthers to keep their line intact there. The Roosters did it the other end only moments ago. They had to answer in kind, and they've done so. Left foot from Brad Fittler. Just couldn't get it to stop. It was well covered by Rooney and Gower. And in the game of inches, sometimes they go against you. One, yes, outside, 23 five. and a half minutes to go in the game. In a train, seven have gone for the Panthers and six for the Roosters. Pulitura is with the ball just inside his own 40 metre line. Rodney for Girdler. Four. Yet to make one of those trademark breaks of his, Ryan Girdler. This Five is Prittis. Marcus, don't go early. Now for Gower. Again, they come up for the charge down, but it goes straight to Minicello. Takes it on the full and runs outside the 20. Beats Campbell. Sattler makes another valuable tackle. They mount something down the left side. Here's Flannery. And they are on their own 40-metre line now, the Sydney Roosters. Here's a near talent to bring off the bench, Chris Flannery. He's been so dangerous. Here's Todd Byrne looking to make up for a mistake earlier on on his own line. A roll on for the Roosters. It's given changes direction, Bleach one. 
Just combining to put him away. I see Martin Lang is about to come back into the game. Fittler away to Finch, and Finch dummies to Crocker. Goes out to Crocker. Gower misses him. Rooney misses him. And I think it's Prentice as Girdler that got him. Girdler tackled him 12 away from the line. Now it's with Finch. He puts a kick in. Gets an interrupted passage. West has got the ball. West has got back into the field of play. Brilliant football. Oh, absolutely brilliant from both sides. The Roosters, they are charging home. Got a real good roll on at the moment. Good dummy half running from the likes of Wing. Brett Finch is coming into the match as well. Martin Lang is now back into the game. On the fourth tackle. And look at the total tackles made in this game. It's gone over 500. Fight last. No one goes in. Pull back. All markers. So Campbell puts a kick in off. The 40-metre line, and uh, it is with Minicello. He was asking the question, and he really couldn't nice take the, uh, the, uh, the risk of letting it go. So Walker has come in from his wing to take this run, and then Hegarty gets it inside goal. Hegarty's gone outside 40. Hegarty's over halfway. He's got Wesson to contend with. Lewis comes at him. He beats Lewis. It goes to Walker. It's gone to Byrne, and Byrne to walk on the 20-metre line. Panthers into the ground. Flannery away to wing. Wing turns it back on the inside for Freddie Fittler, and Fittler is tackled. On the line. Five metres out from the line. Flannery goes right for Finch, and Finch has got players outside him pointing in the direction where they want it. Finch will play it back to Craig Wing. He goes over to Craig Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbon looks at Pulatua, gives the ball back to Crocker. Crocker is held by Girdler. Fifth tackle, last tackle. Wing goes to Finch. Finch rolls it in, and it's saved. And I think it might have been Sattler. There's John, the father, watching on. Oh, how tough's John doing it? The great man, he's playing every tackle himself. The quick men are starting to pick out the slower men in the defensive line of the Panthers. Hegarty, look at the quick men combined here. Hegarty, Chris Walker, then Todd Byrne. Under the crossbar, right. this is how close right. the Roosters went. Gower right. cleaning right. up right. Fittler. That's right. Finally, Reese Wesser and right. Sattler get right. back together to deny Anthony Minicello. Come on. I thought Fittler was about to score yet another try against Penrith. He scored two tries in both of the competition matches against the Panthers right. this year. Right. Some real questions being asked now, Penrith. It's a high dropout, and the Fittler gives it away for Craig Fitzgibbon. Get one, like to the 30-meter line, Hegarty. Hegarty leaving his own brand on this game. Celebrating 100 first-grade games with a try to bring it back to 6-all. His wing taken down by Prittis. They're so close. Look at them. They're five meters away. As it goes to Finch now, he turns it on the inside for Morley. Finches with it. Rickardson a decoy, Fittler a run, back for Burn. Oh, picked up and driven by Pulatua. Ryan Gerd was gone out there, Ray. He signaled the bench, he can't run, he's gone. Finch gets it away, it's over to Cross. Gerd has got him around the legs. It came off Rickardson, it's gone bouncing around. What's Bill Hamilton going to do? He's allowed it to go on. Crocker, fourth back from the in goal. Oh, how do they keep him out? Great defence, yeah, Gerd luck. He's waiting. One of his pins just won't work. Rooney. And there's Gurdler. Look at him. That's two. He's That's three. really, really in trouble out there as Joe Nullivau takes it out towards three. the 20 metre line. Here, Brad. Shane Rodney's about to come on for Luke Ricketts uh, for Four. Ryan Gerdler. I'm sorry, that will mean a reshuffle. Penrith valiantly trying to get it out of their own end. They've been under enormous pressure. Pull a tour to the 30 metre line and push back. Loses the ball, it went backwards. Sattler scooped it away. Rodney is the man running the ball. 35 away from his own line on the last tackle. Gower realises the urgency of the matter. Gets away a good kick, but it's gone straight again to Minicello. 
running away from his 20 metre line and running at the kicker and Gow makes the tackle. They're in trouble Penrith. Pulitzer and Prittis very slow up into the line. The fatigue factory starting to take hold and these men are starting to break them up. Shannon Hegarty, every time he touches the football looks like making a bust. And the trainers working on Ryan Girdler, Andrew Voss sideline. Yeah, Ryan Girdler, we are told, will not be back tonight. It's a calf muscle injury. Craig Gower right at the moment is nursing a problem with his right arm. Shane Rodney's the player who's been told to go out to play left centre. Of course, Preston Campbell now will become number one kicker for the Panthers. So Craig Wing, 31 metres out from the line. Finch, and he had Walker with him. Was Walker tackled, not in possession. Wesser is with the ball. Yeah, no advantage here for Penrith. They will come no back to the scrum. In the Panthers feed. They really worked hard in the second half. The Roosters on the inside balls. They've been pretty successful at it as well. Not on that occasion. All of our read it beautifully. Yeah, Hammond, Chris Walker. That was the answer to the question I was asking. 81,166 here at the yeah. Olympic Stadium tonight. 81,166. Fantastic crowd, wonderful atmosphere, and a tremendous game of rugby league is still being played out between the minor premiers and the defending premiers. Here is Clinton with the ball now, just inside the 40 metre line. Interchange rolling through for you. The Roosters have still got six up their sleeve. Nullabau. It's not great to come to a grand final where you have such great expectations and they're actually exceeded. This has been an unbelievable game of rugby league. Six all, we're into the final quarter of this grand final. And is anybody, they're in trouble, Penrith, but they just keep rising to the occasion. Gower tackled on the last. Where's Campbell? No, Prittis will pass to the left side, with, or the right side with Sattler. Sattler's kick is high, Minicello. He loses the ball forward, and it struck an opposition player. That will be a scrum. It'll be a loose head and feed for the Panthers. They just misjudged it. Actually, ended up hitting him on the chin, Anthony Minicello. I don't know if he had to jump that high, did he? It was coming down. He was in perfect position. The boys are getting rained on. They don't care. It's grand final time. It doesn't matter what happens out there. Just get through it. The conditions worsening all the time. And it lends itself to a kicking game along the ground, in the air. Doesn't matter as long as you do it often. And Gower plays the ball. Eight metres away from the line. Martin Lang surging towards the line. And the Roosters there combined with a three-man tackle. Lomu is on there. It's gone from Campbell away to pull a two up. And again they try to break through on the fringe of the ruck. Prittis waits and he looks at Campbell. He goes away and throws the dummies over. tonight for the Panthers who've been there in a grand final and what a game he's had. He set the first one up, throws the dummy, carries Craig that's given over the line and that has come against the run of play. It comes off the mistake from Anthony Minicello, the high kick and Prittis. It's just reward for the kind of game he's had tonight. Such a tough game, such a soft try but he worked hard for it, Luke Prittis, through the dummy. They hung off him, Flannery just hung off him. Fitzgibbon didn't tackle him probably as hard as he should have. And his leg drive got him over that line. Is that the try that wins Penrith the 2003 grand final? 14 minutes left. The Roosters have got plenty left. Yes, this is a long way from over. Preston Campbell will take over the kicking duties, as Ray pointed out, with Ryan Girdler off the field. Through to Joel Clinton. It is so close, but so far. 14 minutes to go. It's an eternity in this situation. And Jay, the cameraman, gets cooled down as well. So, Preston Campbell, an accomplished goal kicker, takes over from the injured Ryan Girdler from right in front. Campbell hits it and gets a further two points. 
converter try, 12-6, Andrew Voss sideline. And first of all, the try. Look, Ray, 40 years ago at the SCG, if you look at the reverse angle, there was a match played between the Dragons and the West Side in the mud. They declared the match after the game with a photo of Proven and Summers, the Gladiators. Well, tonight we've got Gladiators Mark two. Look at these two coaches. We've got 34 champions out there, two coaches, absolutely living every second. This is sensational. Lang, oh! Rickardson oh. hit him with a shoulder. I don't think either of them are real dusty, Ray. Lang and Rickardson coming together and laying his right eye. Immediately closing. Nullabout. 22 metres out from the line. The Panthers back with a six-point lead. And Luke Prittis is tackled. Slowly to his feet to play the ball. Well, a tour is with it now. 40 metres, 45 metres. Great run. Now it's gone to Gower. Gower keeps it low and between the fullback and the winger, taking up some time. A better kick than kicking at Domenicello on the full. I remember a game of rugby league probably four or five weeks ago when Penrith played the Broncos up there in Brisbane. Penrith 12-0, uh, the Broncos came home, got the 12-6. And then Penrith kicked the field goal to knock the stuffing out of the Broncos. 13-6. Long move, lost the football. It's that time again. Pull it to up. Ten metres out from the line. Almost in the centre of the ground. Campbell goes right to Nullabar. Fatawira now. Shows the ball before choosing to give it to Clinton. And Joel Clinton will play the ball to Prittis. And he goes over to Campbell before Gower. Then an inside ball for Sattler. And Sattler is taken down by Ryan Cross. In fact, it was Michael Crocker, and now it's Wes up to the 10-metre line, showing it a couple of times, running and running across the ground, then finding Joe Nullabau. He goes inside the 10, and is pulled down seven metres away from the Roosters' line. Now it's from Wesser, a dummy half to pull a tour, and he's tackled a metre from the line. Five gone. Prittis wouldn't try it again. It's gone to Campbell. Campbell slipped over. I think he might have been thinking about a drop goal. The ball is loose on the ground. Knock on is ruled. And that'll be a changeover. Well, there you can see Craig Gower's right eye almost closed as well. John Lang coming to the sideline. Morley coming on for Lomu. Two touches for Lomu. Two mistakes. Straight off. Now Kalis. And Finch goes back to Fiddler. Fiddler changes the direction. He goes back to Minicello. Probing for an opening through what must be the tiring Penrith forwards. Morley! Putting his hand up and giving something like 18 metres. Yeah, you would think even with 10 to go, they would probably have to score again, the Panthers, to be... to get home here. Nullivau slowly to his feet. Wing out of dummy half. Probing. 21 out. Right in front of the uprights, the rain absolutely teeming down now. As Flannery puts in a kick, Lewis has got the job and he knocks on. He's got the ball back now, but it'll be knock on against him. Yeah, what on they the first needed. Occasion. They were desperate for a repeat set. They've got it. Little kick from Flannery. And look, you can't blame anyone for making a mistake out there tonight. Look at the rain coming down. The ball's greasy. And that's just what the Roosters wanted. The Panthers were rather fortunate that the try didn't come right there. Now it's timeout. The Roosters were ready for the scrum feed, but the Panthers slow to get there. Now the Roosters with a chance to come back level. Fiddler goes away to Ryan Cross. He beats Rodney, gets it away. Walker's got the ball safely. No. Knock on. Oh, big call from the touch judge here. Well, this man has made a very big call. It goes back off the hands of Cross, then Walker. I wonder whether he touched it with his left hand when it was obscured behind the, the touch judge, the, the replay we just looked at. That could have been the only way that he knocked on Chris Walker. The Panthers now. Rodney playing out in the back line with Ryan Girdler gone for the night. Joe Nullivau. 
I'm told the, the reverse angle camera oh. has Clinton losing the ball. And the Roosters come back with it. Wing away from dummy half inside 20. Let him up, Reece. 11 out from the line. I can smell a golden point golden grand final. Tony. Here is Fitler. Stepping. Now looking, but the Two. Panthers are there. The they put him away. The Sydney Roosters captain plays it back to Hegarty. Hegarty to Finch. Finch then deliberates and tells not on. Gower picks up the loose ball. Zero. And Gower will play the ball 30 metres out just to go back to that Chris Walker knock on. What Peter Sterling suggested on the reverse angle camera was in fact correct. On one picture it was obscure, but there was a knock on there as we picked up on the reverse angle camera. Here is Clinton now. Now Swain. He's come back into the game after being absolutely poleaxed earlier. Hang on, we've got another problem here for Penrith. Trainer is called to the oh. touch line. Who's coming over? Joel Clinton. Pull a tour then. With a surging run as Clinton comes off. They're 22 metres out from the line. Here's a field goal attempt. Charged down by Michael Crocker. What's it? Charged down. And he's... Oh, Crocker is... He is in trouble again from that charge down. He can't stand up, Michael Crocker. He's all over the place. There are combatants going down. Left, right and centre here. Here is Waterhouse. Just outside the 30 metre line. Playing it back to Campbell. He gives it back to Scott Sattler, and Sattler is tackled. Hey, don't wait for the last here. One more in, and Craig Gower have a shot. So it's with Prittis and now Lang, and Lang takes it towards the 10-metre line. That was perfect. Here. Opened it up. Now Campbell's in position. So is Gower. They take another one. Prittis goes wide to Rooney. Oh. Rooney's <laughs> over. Rooney's in. His second try. It is Penrith's third try. Set sold the dummy there. To all intents and purposes, they were setting up the field goal. Everybody thought it was. The Roosters thought it was. They all started moving in field. And Luke Prittis, so clever out of dummy half, went the left side, went the way that they weren't expected to go. And with a brilliant cutout pass, found Chris Walker coming in field, Rooney on the outside. That was the previous attempt. That one got Michael Crocker in the head. No wonder he stayed down. And have a look, they're all going in field. We freeze it there. Chris Walker has come in field like all his teammates. And on the outside, as the play continues, is the try scorer. Gets his second, Luke Rooney. A school kid not long ago gets two in a grand final. Absolute genius play there. John Lane take a bow. This will be something that he'd have worked on at training. A smart little play. The old dummy field goal. And let's go down the blind. 16-6, kick to come, six and a half minutes to go. Two tries in a grand final for the young Panthers winger. Luke Rooney scored the first try of the grand final. Has he scored the last as well? Oh, what about the fans in the background there? What about the bench? Joel Clinton, he's just come off. Man, he's got great faith in his ability and he backs it up every time he goes out. It's not over yet, fellas. But it's not far away. And the Roosters assembled behind the try line. Shot coming down from the crossbar camera as Preston Campbell moves in from 22 out. It's coming around. if that is the try that seals the grand final and the conversion from Preston Campbell. But the try is scored by a local product. Luke Rooney still lives at home with his parents. A product of the junior system of the Panthers. He may well have got him home. I think he has got him home. Well, a tour on the bring back. Luke uh, uh, taking it down to within a couple of metres of the 20 and then as he has been doing, he's towing them along. He's carrying them along. It's been a magnificent last few minutes from Tony Pulatua. Now it's Waterhouse. 18 to 6. 
and six minutes of the grand final to go. The Panthers, they won it in 91, and they seemingly have got it won in 2003. Yeah, just got to keep their heads here. This is where Craig Gow, Luke Prentice come to the fore. The experienced players wind the clock down. They get a good kicking game going, and they make sure that their opponents only have three or four more shots at them. And in that time, they've got to score two tries. My word, he's been good, Martin Lang, in the second half since he came back onto the field. And what about the effort of Luke Prittis? He has set up two tries, scored one, and made 42 tackles in the match. Outstanding performance. Gower's kick taken on the full by Minicello. And he's again tackled by the kicker. How many times has Gower done that? Now Hegarty inside his own 20. Getting it away to Byrne. Byrne away it goes. From Finch, it's gone wide. This is Ryan Croft heading outside the 30. Beating one. Rooney's chasing. Russ has got him on the halfway. Four and a half minutes to go. It's gone across to Minicello, who crosses the 40. Gives it off to Craig Wing. Wing is tackled from behind by Sattler. And they're 30 metres away from the line. The Premiers are not going to go down without a fight. As Finch comes across to Rickardson, Rickardson then gives it on to Walker. Walker steps away from Pulatua, is taken by Rodney, loses the ball. And it's dived on by Rooney. So the Panthers are back in possession. Zero tackle on the 20. Yeah, very poor ball security there from Chris Walker. Held it up in the one arm. Chris Wesser down the short side. Well, given the conditions that this match has been played in, it must go down as one of the best grand finals ever played. The performance by these athletes in conditions like this has been nothing short of fantastic. 40 metre line, Panthers in possession. Three and three quarter minutes to go. Here is Martin Lang. And under normal circumstances, Ray, that would mean the opposition would probably have three more sets of possession, maybe four in these conditions. So all the pressure on the Roosters to come somehow come up with two tries. And all they've managed so far is one in 76 and a half minutes. Hegarty, the man that scored the try for the Roosters. Minicello from dummy half to his captain Brad Fiddler. And then it's gone to Ryan Cross. Rodney is on him and so is Gower. Gower undoubtedly has been playing with... An eyesight problem after a nasty injury early in the game, or earlier in the game, they lose the ball. That there could well be the grand final. Time is now very much against the Roosters. Two and three quarters to go, 12 points behind. Rodney, 32 metres out. Penrith have used up their interchanges. Wessup probing for a tired forward. Prittis, Swain, now, Tadamira, he's got Lewis on his outside, he's also got Prittis with him, he still goes, now he passes, but Lewis is no longer there, Flannery is there, and they've got the ball inside the 20. Well, he waited and waited and waited, eventually too long. Now Morley, this is Hegarty, bouncing away from Gower, going away now to Todd Byrne, he's tackled by Rodney. Greg Alexander, the captain from 91, is already congratulating Ryan Girdler. And what a job Shane Rodney is doing out there as Michael Crocker realises well, that... He's a back row, is it? He's yeah. playing in the centres. Oh, oh, Sadler Finch in the last exchanges of the game. Now Craig Wing outside the 30, and he's picked off by Nullivau and Campbell. One and a half minutes to go in the grand final. It's 18 to 6 in favour of the Panthers. Finch puts in a kick and it's taken by Walker. Now it goes to ground. Knock on. It's gone forward, so it's a changeover to Penrith. Three metres on the Sydney Rooster side. Well, they're going to win it. Girdler said that's it. We they know. It. They know they've won it. But all 34 players are to be congratulated. Magnificent grand final. One of the best I've ever seen. You know when they won it? When Scott Sattler made that tackle on Todd Byrne. That's when they won the match. One of the great tackles of all. Johnny Lang sees his misses, gives her a big kiss and a cuddle, and why not? Not just 34 players out there to be congratulated. Two coaches, a referee, and 81,000 people here tonight who've made it a memorable one. Martin Lang. Like most of the players in the squad, they've been trying to win a grand final. So has Dad. 
He's been there before. This is his first. The only man that is duplicated will be Luke Prittis, and there's every reason to believe he'll be the man of the match. Ball is loose, Andrew Voss sideline. No, it's oh, with John Lang. Look at this, Shane Richardson. John, I know you were confident, but you can believe it's happened. Oh, it's just great. Fantastic. I just, I just hope I don't wake up from tomorrow morning and find out it's still Sunday, that's all. We have watched you age on the sideline during the year. Some days you've looked 100. Right now you're like an 18-year-old. Thank you, thanks. Good on you, John. Go to your players. John Lang winning coach. Right. Well, the time is ticking away. Cinderella story has come true for the Penrith Panthers. None of them have felt this before, other than, of course, Luke Prittis. The coach played in one, he's coached in one, but he's come up empty twice. Tonight, he goes home with the trophy and with 17 very proud players. What a magnificent game. Let's not lose sight of the losers. They were valiant, the defending premiers. A match played in, well, I won't say horrible conditions, but treacherous conditions for rugby league to be played at this standard. But it was, and we've got 34 players to thank for that. They were going down like nine pins right through the game. And now it's come to its end with Penrith winning by 18 to 6. Let's go down. Andrew back in the middle of the ground now. Away. This is incredible. Boyhood dream. Score a try in a grand final. Score two. Win the grand final. Luke Rooney, how good is this? Oh, I can't. I can't be beaten, mate. This is the best feeling ever. I mean, I can't believe it, mate. You can't describe it. It's awesome. Can you tell us about some of the dreams you may have had this week? In any of them, did you have yourself scoring two tries? A la Roy Simmons back in 91. Oh, um, no, I don't I don't know, I was going through my head all week, I was nervous, and then today I wasn't nervous at all, I don't forget I was nervous, we were just excited, and to come here and beat the rest is awesome. Go join your teammates, Luke, well done. Dual try scorer, Luke Rooney scored the first and the last try of the grand final, there's the captains, Alexander from 91, Gow from, 90, uh, from 2003, and what a dream for the Lang family, father and son, taking away the grand final trophy. Andrew Voss is with another of the heroes. What about the tackle from Scott Sattler? I've gone from one of the youngest to the oldest, Scott Sattler, but again, like your coach, John Lang, you feel like 16 years of age again tonight. Oh. Voss, I just can't believe this. It's, it's fair to get the best day of your life other than your kids getting born. But oh, I know everyone says it, but if you're playing the game and you want to try and play it at the best level, this is all it's all about. Scott, your dad is part of Rugby League Grand Final Folklore 1970, playing with a broken jaw. Tonight, you produced a tackle on Todd Burner, flying winger, that will go down as one of the greatest ever in a Grand Final. Oh, you know, you just, you hopefully just don't give up and hopefully they run out of puff, you know. Just do your best. You do anything on a day like this. It was more Rob Coote than your dad, John Settler, though, the tackle. Oh, don't worry, I had that in my mind. <laughs> Going in the match, did you have any doubts? I mean, in, in the back of your head, do you think, no, it's not our time, that you've got to lose one to win one, all those rugby league signs? Yeah, no, everyone's right us, right, right us up all year. You know, they've been waiting for us to fall over. The only thing that's been, uh, the only thing that's been important is the belief from within this team, and, and we had no doubt that we'd be able to challenge these blokes and, and really frustrate them, and that's what we did. Just amazing, Scott. Well done, mate. Thanks, guys. Let's go straight across to Timmy Gilbert. He's over there with Joel Clinton. Joel, they're saying already it's one of the greatest grand finals in history. What was it like to win it? Oh, mate, just to be out here tonight. I mean, take a look around. Look at the boys. They're just over the moon, and I can't... I'm, I'm, I'm just in the clouds at the moment. I don't know what's going to happen next, mate. Just where we're going to go from now is just unbelievable. You gave him a speech at half-time. What did you say? Oh, no, just pump the boys up, mate. You know, look, I mean, everyone had their fair say. From the wingers to the front rowers, everyone had their little bit, and it just helped everyone. When we come out here in the second half and just lift it even more than the first half, and we deserve to win tonight and work hard all year. And now, now, where do we go from here? You said during the week the first bloke you want to talk to is your dad. You're going to find him? Yeah, mate, he's over there, and I can't wait to give him a big hug too. He's, he's I love him, and he loves me, and that's all that matters, mate. Tear in the eye. Oh, mate, there'll be plenty of tears, plenty of beers, mate. Don't worry about that. Congratulations.
Congratulations, Joel. Yeah, thanks very much, boys. Thank you, Tim. Well, Paul Harrigan knows the feeling of winning a grand final, and he's out there with Craig Gower. I certainly do, Craig. What about this feeling? This has been one of the best games ever been played. How are you going? Oh, what a day, Chief. Mate, these bunch of blokes are just dug in all year. Mate, we've had our critics and, you know, our defence, we've had our defence on the ground and feet. We just, we just keep ripping in. And, mate, I can't be, can't be proud enough to be with a bunch of blokes like this. Coaches, staff, everyone. What a day. Mate, the shit that we've gone through. Yes, sir! All right. And what, what about that time, just quickly? You're out on your feet, injury after injury. Did you ever doubt yourself? Did you ever doubt? Oh, mate, when you've got a, a team like the Roosters attacking your mind, there's always a bit of doubt, but, you know, we've dug deep and, uh, you know, the way the Roosters play, they're really enthusiastic getting off the line. But we just, we just stopped doing guns and we just kept working for each other. And, mate, when we knew we had it indoors, we just, we started off great and what a, what a night. Mate, congratulations to me. It seems like a bit of destiny. The town will celebrate tonight. Well done. Well Thanks. done, mate. Thanks, Chief. Thanks very much. Craig Gower with Paul Harrigan, Tim Gilbert with Reese Wesson now. Reese, you almost gave the game away a few years ago. What about that one? Oh, mate, words can't describe how I feel at the moment. This is this is a lot of hard work. Like seven years I've been down here with guys like Sattler, Gowie, Gerds, Tony Pulitua, and it's suddenly, this is the day, this is our moment. It's all come together, mate. Words cannot express it. Oh, mate, it's just an unbelievable feeling. I'm, I'm just so proud, so happy to be a Panther. And hello to all my family in Rockhampton, and hello to all my friends. This is just awesome. Scott Sattler's dad's in folklore. He played with a broken jaw. What about that tackle? Oh, mate, mate, it's, it's, it's crying moments when you have to see when you see a guy like Scott Sattler go to another club. Mate, he's played awesome all year. Today was no exception. He went out there, played strong, minute after minute, tackle after tackle. And, oh, mate, I just love the guy. I love the guy for who he is and for, for the football player he is. Good on you, Reese. Congratulations. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, mate. The Panthers are the Premiers, and they're the defending Premiers, are consoled by their coach, Ricky Stewart. They've had a wonderful run, they've had a great season. It's ended, though, in defeat at the hands of the Panthers. 18 points to six. We take a break, and then we come back for the presentation of trophies and the Churchill Medal. As we welcome you back to the Telstra Stadium, scenes of jubilation, celebration, Sheer delight. Scenes that haven't been seen ever in that jumper anyway. They used to be known as the Chocolate Soldiers. Now they are the Black Cats, the Panthers of Penrith. Last after two rounds of 2003, Wooden Spooners 2001. And third last in 2002. Is it any wonder they are in a mood of jubilation right now? The score breakdown, Rooney got two tries, the first and the last of the grand final. Pritter scored the other. And Campbell kicked two from two, Girdler one from one. Hegarty got the Roosters back into the game and Fitzgibbon was able to convert. So 18 to six, the Panthers win the grand final. As we go to the presentation ceremony, here is Stephen Allen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2003 Telstra Premiership grand final presentation. The Penrith Panthers, their first premiership since 1991, running out winners over the reigning premiers, the Sydney Roosters, 18 points to six. Our dignitaries on stage, ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of Australia, John Howard, the Chief Executive Officer with the National Rugby League, David Gallup, the Chairman of the National Rugby League, Malcolm Node, also joining us from Telstra, David Moffat, and Joyce Churchill, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's my pleasure now to announce the 2003 Clive Churchill medalist for best player on field in the 2003 grand final. A whale of a game. The hooker for the Penrith Panthers, ladies and gentlemen, Luke Brutus. The money ball for the trying to loop Rooney that sealed the game. The Clive Churchill medal, so prestigious in rugby league. Luke Prentiss, the best player on field, congratulations. Way to go.
First, I'd just like to thank Brad and the Roosters. I mean, you blokes have been the benchmark all year, the last two years, and no one can take that away from you. Uh, secondly, to our boys, we had belief in, our bo in ourselves, boys. That's what we can do. It's been about our best game of the year, defensively, attackively. We just stuck in there. To all the fans, thanks very much. Let's get all the way up to Penrith and let's get real. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, the 2003 Clive Churchill medalist for best player on field, Luke Prittis. I'd now like to call upon Brad Fittler and his Sydney Roosters to receive their medals, ladies and gentlemen. Brad Fittler and the Sydney Roosters. One of the greatest rugby league players of all time, just to say a few quick words, ladies and gentlemen, Brad Fittler. Firstly, thanks for everyone coming out. Turned out to be a pretty miserable night, for us especially. Uh, last couple of weeks, everyone's been talking about the Roosters being the benchmark. We might have been, but I think Penrith most were the best side all year. Thoroughly deserved their win. Congratulations to Craig, John Lang and their team. Really played fantastic tonight. A lot of young blokes in there, and they really played well under pressure. It's a sticky, and my blokes. Sort of tough year where everyone's seemed to keep aiming up against you, but we'll be back again next year. Thanks a lot. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a great ambassador for rugby league, one of the best of all time, Brad Fittler and his Sydney Roosters. I'd like to now call upon the referees and touch judges to receive their medals from our dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, the referees and touch judges from the 2003 Telstra Premiership Grand Final. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to receive the Premiership rings and the Telstra Premiership trophy as 2003 Premiers, Craig Gower and the Penrith Panthers. It is a dream come true. The Penrith Panthers, the 2003 Telstra Premiers. The Penrith side coming on stage. And now, Craig, could you say a few words for us, please, mate? Wow, what a, what a night this has been for us. Uh, you know, we've done a, a lot of work all year. Our boys have just dug deep. Week in, week out, mate. No one thought that we could win tonight, and we just we dug deep. What a bunch of guys we've got here! Young guys that just got so much courage and determination. Jeez, I'm, I'm so proud to be to be the leader of this team. To the Roosters, you know how good are they? Side of they, that they just they tested us all night. Our defences kept coming up with the challenge, and you know they're a great side. To Freddie and, and, and Ricky, to our boys, let's enjoy the night and thanks to the fans. Yes, sir. Yeah, great guy. The captain excited out there. A moment that uh, they will cherish right through in their rugby league careers and then even onward. There's the trophy. It's been won by Penrith. 18 points to six. Coming up next, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. There's more to come from here, though. We're coming back. Matthew Johns will do the lap of honour with the Panthers on the other side of this break.